Welcome to the one within all to another Interverse live stream. I've been kind of liking doing it this way lately, and we have awesome energy to bring your way today. So it's often been said that the future of medicine will be light and sound. But the truth is, light has been the medicine for, from the ancient past to the present day. Just think of all the words that are associated with health or healing or good things that actually have the word heal in it. And is that not the ancient name for the sun, Helios? <laughs> and the symbolism associating the sun with medicine and the practice of healing arts has been going on from time immemorial. So we're bringing the ancient wisdom of the past back to the future, getting ourselves outdoors, getting our sun <laughs> without the sunscreen and doing what we can to help repair all of the damage to our natural rhythms by encoding ourselves with the source and origin of all life in the realm, which is the sun. So today's guest, Jackie Jolie, she has an amazing backstory of bringing herself back from the brink of some pretty gnarly illness by getting her light life in order. And that includes all kinds of things like the amount of artificial light we get and the time we get it, the quality of the artificial light, but most importantly, seeing those sunrises and sunsets and getting outside and getting as much sunlight on your skin as possible. So Jackie's been doing tons of webinars and a lot of podcasts lately where she describes this whole quantum light thing. And before we get too worried about the word quantum being kind of woo, let's just think of it as quantity and quality. I mean, that's kind of the basics of what quantum means anyway. So the quantity and quality of light in your life, it, it determines everything about your life. Life is light, practically the same word. So very excited to get into it today with Jackie the joyful general of the Light Warrior Army. Welcome to the Interverse. Thanks for being here. Hey, thanks so much for the introduction. Really appreciate it. And thanks for having me on. Oh, yeah. And I forgot to mention your website is lightshapes.life, correct? Yes. Awesome. So we're here. Let's do it. Can you tell us some more about your story? You know, maybe start us from the beginning, where you came from to where you are now. Yeah. I want to hear all the details. It's always a good place to start. Um, so my full-time job, besides being a light warrior, is I work on horses for a living. I do body work on horses, and uh, I've been doing that about 10 years now. And because of being in some type of a natural field of healing, um, love your connection there with healing and Helios. I hadn't made that. I like that. I'll be using it. Thank you. Um, I've always kind of followed more natural and holistic practices in life, uh, eating whole foods, working out. I rode horses. I really considered myself quote unquote healthy um, compared to most standard American diets or standard American ways of living. But three years ago, I came down with Lyme disease and I did have a tick that bit me. Um, it took about a month or two really for symptoms to hit. I never got the typical rash, which most don't actually in statistics. Um, and I just got hit with like a wall of chronic fatigue, um, crashing of hormones and libido and energy got really irritable, which is not my personality at all. Um, and then severe brain fog, like I couldn't even say vocabulary of my job to clients or remember what I had worked on on a horse. For something that I've been doing for 10 years, I can usually recall super easy. Um, so major issues. And I hadn't even thought about the tick, you know, three months later, when I went to go get blood work from my doctor just to see what was going on. Luckily, she's a horse person. And she was like, I'm gonna test you for Lyme. And I was like, Oh, yeah, I had a tick. And of course, it came back positive. Um, now, unfortunately, in our allopathic modern medicinal protocols, they like to give you antibiotics for Lyme disease, and they like to give you three months worth of antibiotics. And I had probably in my whole life had maybe seven to 10 days total of a long protocol of antibiotics. So I wasn't really keen on doing that. But since I'd never had Lyme disease before, I was, you know, Googling and being my own doctor and researching things, which my doctor was actually um, pushing me to do, you know, go and research and get your information. She still wanted me to take the antibiotics, however. And after I did some initial research on it, and most people that had, li had Lyme said the antibiotics don't work, they're going to ruin your gut, which is going to leave you with more issues even once you do kill the Lyme. And so when I went back to the doctor to get the prescription, I said, um, well, what do we do after three months if I still have Lyme? Oh, well, we just give you three more months of antibiotics. And I was like, well, that means it doesn't work. <laughs> so I said, okay, give me the prescription. I never filled it. And I came home and I took, man, like a month of just researching every day and reading. And I found Dr. Stephen Buner. So if there are people on this call that have Lyme disease or know people with Lyme disease, 
Um, Stephen Buhner is a genius. He's an herbalist, an animist. He's been working with plants like the last 40 years. Uh, you can find podcasts on him, but he has books on antivirals, antibacterials um, to use purely with plants. But he has a whole book on healing Lyme, and he's been helping the Lyme community probably close to two decades now. And I used his herbal pro protocol of tinctures and herbs to kill the Lyme. But at the same time, I signed up with a naturopath to kind of work on how else can I support my body holistically while I'm killing this bacteria. And he really helped me give some supplements that helped mitochondria, which I hadn't really had anybody talk to me about before. He also kind of mentioned a light life and getting out in the sun. It didn't hit me at that point because... In his protocol, it was kind of just like adding light and adding sun to your life. And I already worked outside and rode horses. And so I was like, I'm outside a, a good a bit. Like, I've got to be fine with my light life. Um, so I continued through his protocols of making sure we were taking care of my gut. Can you give his name one more time for the audience? Uh, Dr. Stephen Buhner, B-U-H-N-E-R. Um, and then the naturopath was a, a different guy that I worked with. Um, and he's wonderful as well. But I didn't resonate with his his light information at that moment. But he did help me with doing gut tests and stool tests and kind of just getting an idea of your body working for yourself. And even if I was having all of these issues, it was still my body's way of trying to keep itself in balance and in check, even though I had inflammation and had these things going on. He really helped me understand to have a full appreciation for how strong our bodies are and that they're always wanting to heal no matter what. And even if we have a few symptoms here and there, it's still our body trying to do the best it can to be able to function every day. That's so important just to put that out there because, I mean, we can kind of get into the weeds on what I'm about to say after you've continued, yeah. the, continued through your story. But when we have this mindset of symptoms, meaning our body is broken, yes, that is mental programming and part of the spell of the diagnosis that we get from the medical sorcerers. So. Yes. Really it's crucial what you just said. Yes, in modern days, we want to put a diagnosis on everything, which I'm not saying is not important, but once we put all these labels and diagnoses, then it is, we become who that is, or we become what that label and diagnosis is, and it makes us feel helpless, and it makes us feel damaged and broken, and really our bodies are phenomenal and amazing and strong, and it's doing the best it can so that you can function every day, even with having like a bloated gut or a headache or fatigue. It's because your body's working really hard at that moment to continue you going. And so he did help with these little seeds of just appreciation for my body and not feeling so worn down and concerned that my body was just going to like die <laughs> at 35 years of age, you know? Um, However, one of my other friends who's always been an angel in my life, Jim Laird, he's also on Instagram and teaches about quantum health. And he was my personal trainer back in Kentucky. And he turned me on to Dr. Jack Cruz, K-R-U-S-E. And Dr. Jack Cruz has been a pioneer teaching quantum health and science for about 15 to almost 20 years now. He was a neurosurgeon actually here in New Orleans. I'm located in Louisiana. And um, I found his work and you can take the biggest, deepest rabbit hole dive into his work. And it's a lot of quantum physics. A lot of it will go over your head. It still does mine. But it allowed me to see that there was this whole other opportunity and option to heal myself using my own body and the sun and light, which is technically free. And it would bring about this abundance. And so I started reading his stuff and trying to understand it. Luckily, with him being local, he had some membership events and things that I could go to. And that was wonderful because then you're surrounded by like-minded folks of all different ages and backgrounds. Most of them all were either healing or had healed a really bad diagnosis, cancer, breast cancer, you know, autoimmune diseases, um, all kinds of stuff. There was a few people there just as preventative, um, but most of us were coming from a place of, of illness and sickness. And so you're able to share all those stories and then you get so much help on the real level of people, what they've done every day that they give you tips and help. And that has been wonderful to where I said, okay, like I've been spending $5,000 a year for the last five years on my health between vitamins and supplements and gut tests and blood tests and all these things. And yeah, like I get a supplement that might help me feel a little bit better, but I never feel optimal. And so I said, let's get off all those trains and I'm going to get on the light train and just see what happens, you know, give it 30, 60, 90 days and see what happens. And I haven't stopped yet. I'm about two and a half years in now. And, you know, I killed Lyme disease. It has never come back. 
Um, my libido and hormones are now at optimal levels like they should be. Um, gut is better and healthier. I have more energy now at 37 than I think I've ever had, even in my 20s when you're you know, staying up late and drinking on the weekends and doing all the things that you're doing. Um, and so it's just been miraculous of how many things have changed in my life. In addition to fixing the physical, on the mental side, I was able to get that brain fog to go away to where now I'm just recalling things easily, remembering things. I can read books and actually remember what I read. And then in addition, as a surprise, I had this spiritual consciousness that really started to increase and rise in me um, to where now I just I want to share this information so much because I feel like it's what people are missing in their life. Um, on all those aspects, the physical, the mental, and the spiritual. This is what we were tied to from the beginning of time that gave us life. And um, all of our previous ancestors and civilizations, and even doctors earlier in the years here in, the, in America, all used Helios and heliotherapy to heal. And so here I am. I became a quantum health coach last year, and I'm using it to, um, sorry, that's my dog. Hey! <laughs> um, I'm trying to still be outside as you can see, but yeah, I love your, your setting here. So, uh, yeah, came, became a quantum health coach and this is kind of my love affair on the side that I teach local seminars at like yoga studios, health clubs, doctor's offices. I've also started doing zoom webinars to be able to open up the information to people all over the world. And this is how I want to spread my message. And so now I've been recently getting on some podcasts and, uh, thank you again for the opportunity. And that's my story. And I hope to just continue to share this with everybody as far and wide as we possibly can. Oh, man, I have so many directions to go already. Yeah, this is great. <laughs> All right. <laughs> oh, the we... first thing that's popping into my head is just this. And maybe this is like going to the advanced question before we cover the basics, but it's the most immediate pressing thought in my mind is there's this Bible verse about the light that shines in the darkness and the darkness comprehendeth it not. And I was listening to another uh, teacher today that I really like, uh, Seven Bomar, and he was talking about this verse and he pointed out like, actually, the realm we're in right now is the realm of darkness. If you took away the sun, this all this would be dark. <laughs> There's just the one thing that is making all the light and even the artificial light or the bioluminescence wouldn't exist if the sun didn't do its thing first. So it is the light and we still have no idea really what it is <laughs> you know yeah. you can believe nasa's descriptions of its functionality and its composition but you know or not i don't believe anything from them so <laughs> the uh the whole thing with the sun is that it is this big mysterious portal of life in the world and it's amazing so you know have you got any to weave this into a question like has your relationship changed with the sun and the spiritual consciousness rising given you any more of a like an intuitive sense or an idea of your personal cosmology of like, what is the sun? Oh my gosh. There's so many pathways, even in that answer. Ooh. Yes. And yes. And yes. Are, are the initial answers. Um, I was actually raised in a really strict Christian home. This would be a whole another story in podcast. Um, and I really um, ran away from that in my teenage and young adult years and had a lot of trouble with the concept of faith. I knew it existed. I admired people like that go into the military or even have extreme faith in your typical institutionalized organized religion and nothing wrong with any of those. Um, I just thought it was so amazing that people could put like their full faith without questioning everything. Right. And I ended up questioning everything because in my household as a child, it was, you didn't question anything. It was just the Bible and they told you what to do and that's what you did. And with, Tying back to the sun, the intuition that I have now really is amazing. One, on the physical side, I thought I was pretty in tune with my body, but tying back to nature and the sun has really allowed me to connect very deeply with my body to where I can kind of be like, what do I want to eat today? And just kind of know it. Or, you know, now I've gotten rid of all supplements basically except down to magnesium. And I never really feel like I need a lot of that. Um, I have a few things that I keep in the house for maybe if I feel a cold or, or been around somebody with a cold. Um, but the intuitiveness that I have with my body now of what it needs and when to do that and when to take the time to do that has increased and connected. As far as what I think the sun is, um, that has gotten really interesting. I 
actually think the sun is the son of God. <laughs> There's been some different people on podcasts talking about that the Bible is actually kind of like a storytelling book that actually comes straight from our astrology and the stars as they would have Oh, yeah, we do a lot of that here. The year, yeah. And it's really fascinating to listen to, especially coming from the background that I had as a child. And if you think about that, it kind of makes sense. I mean, our ancestors wouldn't have had the internet or books even, or, you know, how did they learn about seasons and storms and things that happened because you didn't have the weather channel telling you about it. And as they were watching different things go around, but they also saw that the sun brought life to everything. And I fully believe that it's, you know, in this Trinity that we have on the Christian side, it would make sense that the son of God is really the son of God, like the S-U-N. So I, I like that. I like the idea of it being a portal as well, um, because so many things have come through now. Um, I'm actually currently working on an invention that's going to be a light therapy product for animals. And that idea came to me on the beach of spending two weeks in Tulum, Mexico, like four months after I got into all of this, like I took some time for myself and I spent every day out in the light, strong light in Mexico with lots of magnetism down there. And I think that that coding and that messaging was a download from the sun, like from the son of God. Um, I don't know how else it would have come to me. I wasn't thinking about anything else like that. Um, and there's been many things like that now on the conscious side that I just think have become stronger. I have so much faith now in the idea of having a whole army of angels and guides and ancestors that are there in whatever other dimension or universe that exists, helping us and protecting us. Um, and that was something that I just wasn't, I wasn't sure. And I also didn't put a lot of like that faith and love. Like now I walk every day in the morning talking to my guides and talking to my angels and life has only become more and more abundant ever since. And I think the more that you do use gratitude that happens, but where did that connection come initially? I never did any of that before. So I have that time now that is so precious and so special and people deserve to have that and find that. <sighs> <laughs> You're right. There's a lot of directions to go just in that answer, but oh, we'll, yeah. I'll, I took a couple notes. We'll hold on to those. And okay. <laughs> regarding the whole son of God thing, I totally love how much that can bring somebody back into actually um, no, no longer in dissonance with their religious upbringing. And in fact, like a more advanced connection to their religious upbringing. <laughs> so it's a different type of division because still like the dogmatists, you're not going to get along with their worldview. If you try to, you know, you, you'll be fine with theirs, but they won't like yours. Like that's idolatry. Yeah. And it can be idolatrous to like worship anything external as the, the God or whatever. Yes. And that's, you know, that's an issue. But what I think about it being the son being the son of God, S-O-N-S-U-N, is you think of it like fractals, right? The son isn't the whole creator. The son isn't the creator uh, yeah. in a in a totality of all reality, perhaps. But it is the creator in a fractal dimension of scale, you know, step down from the whole universe, perhaps, or the whole multiverse or whatever it is. Right. And then like whenever we think about bringing the sun into ourself and how the word Christos refers to black, actually, and so does Krishna and the black sun or the hidden sun and all that occultic symbolism. I think that's referring to the light of the sun or the source inside of you, because like we're literally walking around as vessels, containers for the sunlight, which is the step down version of the source light. Anyway, it's like, it's very interesting. And uh, <laughs> the further I go on the path, the more I'm like, yeah, okay. At first I was sort of like, what are these guys up to whenever I found out about all the, the connection between every religion and mythology and cult that actually ties everything back to the sun, including the names of gods like Saturn and Mercury, mm -hmm. really actually talking about the sun before they got assigned to the other planets. And I was like, this seems like scammy or, or some, you know, got like really critical of it. But the further I go into like astro theology and realizing that there's so much value in the uh, mythologies and the scriptures, as long as you just strictly pertain it to what you can know about nature through the allegory. Yeah. You know, and you get out of sort of the unnecessary mysticism, which is just as problematic as unnecessary mechanism. 
in the science cult. Anyway, uh, <laughs> long response, long tangent. But what I want to talk about now, man, there's a lot of things I want to talk about. But before we get into more about your method, uh, I would like to see if you could talk more about like, what do you think Lyme disease is? Because I know many people in the community that listen, they don't believe the virus or germ theory, or at least they don't believe that whatever is going on with illnesses like that is as described by the mainstream. And I'm with them on that. I'm, I don't think anything as described by the mainstream is really accurate, but you know, there's also been a lot of research done on engineered bioweapons and, you know, something might not exist in nature as a contagion or a virus, but it could very well exist in an artificial sense. So anyway, like, what do you think about the whole virus germ theory and, and Lyme disease? Has your experience with it taught you that it's different than what they say in the medical science profession? Well, most definitely. <laughs> Usually whatever they say in the medical professional, I know it's something that's opposite or definitely not the full truth. Um, do I think that people get bit by ticks or even other insects that are carrying some type of bacteria that can cause some issues in the body? Yes. But there has been enough evidence and research done that we were, or we, the government and the military complex, um, was putting diseases and different types of infections into insects and testing them and even using them like in the Korean War. So we already know that something like that existed. And, you know, we already just experienced the whole Wuhan lab debacle. Things can happen, even if it's not on purpose and malicious. Like, how are you going to contain all the insects with all of the things that you've put in them? So could it be something accidental where some of these insects got off of the island? And now between breeding and just modern life of having more intense inflammation in our bodies, but also um, a more intense environment, even for the insects and ecosystems because of what we're doing? Could that cause things to even just kind of explode into a more vicious disease? I think that could be part of it. On top of that, at the same time, us as humans, which is what we're going to get into today, we're spending the majority of our time indoors. Our mitochondria are becoming dysfunctional because our circadian clocks and rhythms are upside down. And so our immune system and our natural defense system is very weakened. And we are getting bombarded by more toxins, more poisons, more non-native EMFs than we ever have before. And so for me, I really think it's a little bit of we do have our environment. Like I believe definitely in the terrain theory much more than I do the, the germ theory. We've been living around bacteria and viruses since the beginning of time. But I think now we're getting so weakened as a species and perhaps the bugs have either gotten, you know, contaminated as well or interbred that way that now we're coming into viruses and bacteria that maybe we haven't been exposed to before. Although our bodies are so strong and if we had kept them strong, they should have been able to fight these things. But I think we're at a weakened state. We're bombarded by more toxins and poisons in our environment that makes us weaker. So then we get these viruses and bacteria and our bodies are not able to handle it. Um, there's even a whole like, it's not theory because exosomes have been proven, but I like the idea of exosomes that are these pieces of DNA that are on the outside of our bodies that can even expand out to like six feet, which is interesting of why COVID always kept us six feet apart. Um, That's and, also the size of the human biofield yes, like that I work on with tuning forks. It's exactly yeah. about six feet. Yeah. Horses have like a 20 foot one. It's pretty cool. Oh um, yeah. We got to talk about that uh, later on. But I believe in the exosomes too. And there was some study I read years ago before I even got into all this. Um, and it's based off of like the terrain theory, but they studied something where they put a bunch of people into a space, like a supermarket or a mall, and they were able to somehow study the exosomes. And like, there were people that had like DNA fragments of HIV or some other type of bacteria. And they were able to see that some of it spread to other people, but then those people that got the exosomes spread to them, they didn't necessarily always come down with the HIV or Lyme or whatever it was that they were studying. And I think that shows the difference in somebody's body having a really powerful redox potential, which is your protection against invading toxins or bacteria, or you don't. Um, on top of that, there's even more to this that I think I add in where now we have like 5G coming in, 4 and 5G, which is our Wi-Fi and non-native EMFs that are much stronger than they ever used to be. And there's an idea that um, 
the viruses that we actually get, like Lyme disease, COVID, flu, all these things, it happens because we get so many toxins in our body that our body needs to expel and get rid of in those exosome fragments. And some of them now, because of the big bombardment of like the 5G constantly on us, we now are um, exposed and become these viruses in our body. So again, I'm not a doctor, and so I don't know that any of that is per se the answer, but all of those are interesting theories that I think have a little bit of truth to all of them and could all be happening at the same parallel time. Um, and that's why we need to learn this information because technically I should have been able to get bit by five or 10 ticks a year and never come down with Lyme disease if my redox potential was high and strong. Gotcha. Yeah. <laughs> I just had a big tick experience last week, <laughs> like oh. walked through a bunch of seed ticks, a bomb of them. And man. But it is no big deal. Uh, I, I asked the tribe for advice on how to like unembed these tiny little bastards out of my legs and uh, was given. This is what I love about our Telegram chat. If you have Telegram, you should totally join our, our group chat. I will. Oh, it's so fun in there. Because like <laughs> I, I went to the internet and searched for what to do whenever you're covered in seed ticks. All I got was like poison. Use some kind of poison. <laughs> And then I asked my, I couldn't find anything holistic or at all intelligent. And then I asked my group chat and I got a lot of good answers and I put that into practice. So nice. it's like we're creating what the internet was always meant to be by being connected to each other instead of algorithms and all that. So yeah, what I want to do is make sure that in the first half, we have a lot of time to talk about the method and the strategy. So, you know, maybe you could start out by describing a little more about what people can expect from following your protocol and then get into the protocol itself and uh you know spare no details about like the reasoning behind one part of it or another we want to hear uh you know exactly how we can help ourselves here with the light yes okay perfect well i'll have to throw out just a little bit of science and foundation just so people can kind of understand the why um, if you don't understand the why, you'll never stick to something or even understand why you're feeling, uh, what you're feeling by doing certain protocols or, or going into this. So statistics say that we're spending 93% of our time indoors nowadays. And obviously, we all know that modern diseases, autoimmune diseases, infertility, cancer, you name it, everything is on the rise. Like we are a very sick nation. Um, however, the United States is the number one consumer of pharmaceuticals, but yet we rank like 38 or 40 in the whole world of longevity and health outcomes. So we deal with obesity, we deal with suicides, we deal with all kinds of mental health issues. And yet there's a pill for everything. So you would think that that would be the magic answer and that we would be getting better, but we're actually only getting worse. And most of these modern diseases did not even exist 50, 60, definitely 100 years ago. So what has changed? Yes, we have poison in the air and the water and the food and vaccines and all those type of things. But what really has changed in our lives is our light environment. Our ancestors were tied to light. That's where we were born. That's where we lived, worked, reproduced. All of the things was always outside. And so what that means is we were under the full spectrum of the sun all day long. And then we had the night and the evening where it was dark. It was not lit up by a bunch of artificial lighting. So when we talk about the full spectrum of lighting, it kind of takes us back to grade school biology class. Um, if you think about the rainbow and the acronym that they would give us of Roy G. Biv, so red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet, um, that's your full spectrum of light outside when the sun is outside. Now, we can only see about 30% of that. It's not like you're going to walk out and see purple or green. Um, we get some hues of red and orange and yellow and blue during the middle of the day, but we can only see about 30% of that spectrum. However, our body and environment in our body is exposed and responds to the environment of that full spectrum of lighting by your mitochondria. And we can kind of dig into the mitochondria later, but I want to get the full spectrum of lighting across. So when the sun starts to come up at sunrise time, you are going to only get the wavelengths of red, orange, and yellow. And those are very healing wavelengths. If anybody on the call or this or watching this has been to a infrared sauna or you might use an esthetician that will use a laser on your face for anti-aging. Um, you can use red light and infrared for scar prevention and healing. Um, it hydrates your tissue. It will help you grow hair back. Um, it can prevent and help with cancer. Um, that's the light that is coming at sunrise and at sunset. Through the rest of the day, you're always still going to have 
your wavelengths of red, yellow, and orange. You have actually about 43% of red, orange, and yellow throughout the whole entire day, even when the other color spectrums come out. And so once the sun gets to above 30 degrees, that's when your blue, green, some of your indigo is going to start coming through when you actually get the hot part of the day. And that's also when your UVA and your UVB rays are going to come out. And those help in so many ways as well. So if we go back to our ancestors of where we were living outside, you would have gotten up at sunrise, gotten outside to start working on the farm or in your tribe of Indians for TP making or going hunting, whatever you were going to do for the day. Your eyes and your skin are big solar panels. And so we have all these photoreceptors built into our skin cells and into our retina. And those are responsible to turning on your day for you and turning on what we call circadian clocks and circadian rhythms. And those, are, those terms are starting to come around in mainstream media, finally. <laughs> they were actually founded back in like the 30s and Nobel Prize and all of that. But of course, mainstream media didn't tell us anything about that back then. Um, so your circadian clocks are every single system that's in our body, cardiovascular, respiratory, um, reproductive, anything, everything. They're all run off of clocks. And of course, our clocks, we like them to run on time at the right pace um, and not get jumbled up and be off time. And we have one big master clock that's in our brain. It sits behind the hypothalamus. It's the suprachiasmatic nucleus. Try to say that three times fast. Um, it only gets its message through our eyes, through the retina. And so again, when you get out and see that sunrise light in the morning, it's going to come through the eyes as long as you have no sunglasses and no contacts on. We'll get to all that protocol stuff later. And it's going to tell the body, okay, it's morning, like we got to wake up. So let's raise the cortisol, let's raise the blood sugar, let's raise your adrenaline, let's get all of your sexual hormones going on, let's get your digestive going, because you need it to have energy to be abundant through the day of whatever you need to do, hunting, farming, you know, making babies, whatever. And um, throughout the rest of the day, that continues when the blue light and the green light comes out in the middle of the day, your UVA and your UVB those wavelengths are helpful to make your sexual hormones, make your vitamin D, lower your blood pressure naturally, lower your cholesterol naturally. Your body actually has to have cholesterol in it to make vitamin D. And then in the afternoon, as that light starts to go away, you're going to go back into just the red, orange, and yellow wavelengths that are healing. Another reason for this is you can see some of our like local not local, sorry, some of our hunter-gatherer tribes that are still around in the world, some are over in Africa and India and Saudi Arabia areas. They're very dark. They're outside all of the time. They eat pretty much a meat-based diet. They never get diabetes. They never get cardiovascular disease. They don't even barely brush their teeth and they don't lose their teeth and they're nice and white. So they don't get any of the problems that we have in this modern world. Um, and what happens when you get your light on the skin first thing in the morning and in the afternoon, that red and orange and yellow wavelengths helps your body make a natural SPF that what we call in the quantum health area, um, your solar callus. And so you want to build up that solar callus so that in the morning, as that's building, your skin is then going to be able to help you defend yourself against the stronger rays of UVB and UVA during the middle of the day. You still need that light to be able to produce your hormones, produce vitamin D, but the solar callus will help that. And then again in the afternoon, as those rays go away and you only get the red, orange, and yellow, then it's going to heal that skin again and make the solar callus even stronger. So your body has a natural way to have a natural SPF against strong UVB rays. Instead of most modern Americans now, we never go outside all the time. We never build that solar callus. And we might go to the beach once or twice a year and we're out all day long. We burn the shit out of our skin. We're spraying ourselves with cancer causing sunscreen. And then we're able to blame the sun for cancer instead. And that's really not the way that it works. The sun does not cause skin cancer. And we can get into more of those details later. So the way that we really want to think about this is how our ancestors lived before. They lived outside during the day. And even when they came into either houses or villages or teepees or huts at night, they didn't have artificial lighting at night either. They either had fire, candles, um, really that's all they would have had back then. And then in the early industrial ages, we had incandescent bulbs. Fire, candles, and incandescent bulbs only put off a red and orange and yellow wavelength. It does not put off any blue whatsoever. And so that's still very natural to what our genes and DNA were tied to in the beginning of time. And it doesn't disrupt our circadian rhythms. So the way that artificial light and blue light by itself can interrupt our, artificial, our, interrupt our circadian rhythms 
is then when we look at blue light at night or we're surrounded by it all day long and artificial lighting, so your LEDs, your fluorescents, your tech screens, which are your phones, laptops, uh, TV screens, they only emit a blue wavelength. And so the blue wavelength when you have it outside is natural. You only get it during the middle of the day, but you also have all the rest of the full spectrum of color, the rainbow with it, which protects you. When we have just blue light by itself, so like a tanning bed or your screens at night or underneath artificial lighting all day long, you're telling your body that it's the middle of the day, that it's noon to two or three o'clock. When at night you might be home and it's eight o'clock at night and your body needs to actually start making melatonin and all of its regenerative hormones to uh, regenerate your body while you're sleeping, anti-age, get rid of cancer cells. I kind of, we call it the dishwasher, like running the dishwasher at night. Um, and we can get into that. So we need to get back to those natural cycles. Basically, all modern diseases that we have nowadays, you know, autoimmune diseases, cancer, infertility, diabetes, heart issues, um, high blood pressure, all of it is caused by us staying indoors more and having our circadian rhythms mismatched. And by having our circadian rhythms mismatched, it causes our mitochondria to get dysfunctional, which then leads to all of these genetic issues and down the line becomes a genetic issue. We never used to have all of this before. So the protocols that we get into so that we can cover it in the first hour, you want to make your days light and really, really bright. And you want to make your nights dark, dark, dark. And really, if you can just get that over anything else, you are going to change your life. You're going to get healthier. And it's not even going to really matter <laughs> the exercise and the, and the diet and you know sleep because all of that is going to fall into place. Those things are important. But until you get your light life right, you'll always be spinning your wheels and not be optimal until you can get your circadian clocks in check. So the best way to reset your circadian clocks is to get up and see the sunrise. So like for me, every day it is now a non-negotiable. It doesn't care like family, boyfriends, friends, pets, anything. Like I will be seeing the sunrise every single day for the rest of my life. Even if it's raining or cloudy, you're still getting healthy light. Um, and so you get up and I see the sunrise. That is the first light that hits my eyes. I don't look at my phone. I don't open my refrigerator. I don't turn on my lights in my bathroom. Um, none of that artificial lighting is going to hit my eyes until after I have seen the sunrise. So I usually get up. I go outside. I've got dogs to feed, horses to feed. I'm barefoot and I try to be as I live in the country. So I could be nude if I want to. And I do do that sometimes. Um, but I am least clothed as possible because, again, those photoreceptors are all over our bodies as a solar panel and in the eyes. And so you're not going to want to have any sunglasses on or contacts as those will block the healthy wavelengths of coming into your body. So you want to spend that morning and that time with the sunrise. Dosage and timing is going to be different for everybody. Um, you want to get at least 15 to 20 to 30 minutes. If you're sick and you have a diagnosis, you are going to need more light throughout the whole day to heal yourself. So you're going to have to schedule your life with light. Um, but at least get that sunrise. You know, if you have kids and you're rushing off to work or school, open up the sunroof, open up your windows. The great thing about light is that those photons expand. And so they will still reach you. Optimal would still be your eyes and all of your skin. But during the week, if you've got school or work, like do that. And then on the weekends, really try to spend time more out in the light. For the rest of the day, your eyes and skin still need to see the different segments of the light spectrum throughout the day because it's going to change like a spectrum, right? It's going to be a wave that comes up and peaks and then comes back down. So if you're working or in school or if, even if you work from home, um, take sun breaks. You know, people take cigarette breaks and rest breaks, like take sun breaks. Take every hour, hour and a half to go outside, try to expose as much skin as possible, no contacts, no, no sunglasses and get 15 or 20 minutes um, of sunshine with, with the light. And then in the afternoon, you wanna to try to get that afternoon sunset time as well because that equally is gonna tell the body, okay, it's about to be nighttime, we need to stop producing blood sugar, stop producing cortisol, stop producing some of the sexual hormones and go more into the regenerative hormones that we need like your melatonin and relaxing type of things to get you ready for the evening to run your dishwasher at night to repair and anti-age. And so then at night, number one, you want to try to have your food or dinner done by dark. Um, you don't want your body focusing on digesting food when you're sleeping, when it needs to be running your dishwasher. 
And so you want to have a good three to four hours before bed of when you're finishing your last meal. And then, then you have a good fasting period to be able to run autophagy and apoptosis, which is your dishwasher programs to get rid of damaged cells, cancer cells, regenerate your body, anti-age, sleep good, and wake up with energy. Um, on the contrary of having all the light and making it bright during the day, you need to make your nights dark. Our ancestors would have had the same. So like in my house, all of my bulbs now have been changed over to incandescent bulbs. I don't have any more LED or fluorescence or like in my pantry, the fluorescent up, up top would be like such a pain in the ass to change. I just don't ever turn it on <laughs> um, unless it's during the day. But at night, all of my bulbs have changed over to incandescent. And really, I don't even have most of those lit even by like eight o'clock. So the incandescent can still mess with the circadian rhythms and melatonin the later that it gets in the evening. So then I either switch over to candles or I have like a headlamp that has a red LED bulb. Um, I've got some red LED night lights that are plugged into like my bathroom. So I never have to turn on those lights at night if I need them. There's a lot of companies that we can send over in the notes or whatever that you can go and find information and products for all of this. Um, in the winter, I've got a fireplace so I can use fire. I also have big red and infrared LED panels that I use for red light therapy, but I can also have those on for light if I really need something bright to see. If I am using tech screens at all, whether that's laptop, computer, I mean, sorry, laptop, phone, or TV, I will have um, blue blocking glasses that I will wear. So like these cool little two flickies. So get rid of the sunglasses, invest in a good pair of blue blocking glasses. They have to have the red and orange lenses. There's some that are being sold in stores nowadays with clear lenses and they're full of shit. So they don't work. Yeah, that doesn't make so, any sense. <laughs> and it, if it them. doesn't change the color of the world around you, it's not doing enough. Don't waste your money on those. They're I have some, but they're more like yellow. And I know I need to go go further down the spectrum to the red. Absolutely. Red and orange for at night. The yellows are fine for, especially if somebody that works like on a computer all day or in a studio all day, the yellow will just actually help so that you're not um, weakening your eye muscles by looking at the computer screen all day and under fluorescent bulbs. Um, what else? There's a couple of things that I do to defend myself against like non-native EMFs as well. And we can get into that later if we want. That's still a light story. It kind of ties into the magnetism part of the pillars of quantum health. But, um, you know, like even right now I have my laptop in front of me, but I have Defender Shield, um, a square pad that's underneath it that blocks the radiation. I have my Wi-Fi turned off of my laptop because I have a USB cord that's plugged into the laptop all the way to my modem. And that actually makes it a faster connection anyways, because it's corded. And then I don't have my Wi-Fi on, like I don't have my modem on unless I need it. So when I'm doing these, I hook up the modem and turn it on, but the rest of the day it's off. Um, you know, I leave my dogs here during the day and I don't want them being exposed to non-native EMF either. Like dogs are coming down with all kinds of cancers and diseases and it's because they're staying indoors more and around more non-native EMFs and fake lighting as well. And that and would be natural. super garbage food that is then like, maybe they would process the garbage food pretty well if they didn't have all those extra factors. Exactly. Exactly. So that's kind of my protocols. I do add in and we can get into all of this later for specifics. You know, I do do some cold therapy, some red and infrared light therapy as well. Um, there are some more and non-native EMF protections that I do, but for most people, if you can just understand the full light spectrum, as far as the light is always changing outdoors and you always have the red light around, even when you have blue light, and then we can get into the specifics of what like the blue light wavelengths do and reducing your blood pressure naturally and, and reducing your cholesterol naturally. There's so much that the sun does for you besides just making vitamin D. And it's super important that we tie back into that and we get away from the blue light at night. The blue light at night is making you more tired, more sick, fat, and pre-diabetic before you even know what you've eaten. Like you can get away from the blue light and have a donut every now and then, and you're going to be fine. But there's even people now that are athletes and they look or would be considered, you know, healthy and they're still pre-diabetic and they eat a good diet and they exercise and they sleep. But if they're looking at blue light all night long, it's keeping your cortisol up. It's keeping your blood sugar up because you're telling your body that it's noon when you get the blue light outside. So people really need to understand that part of the light spectrum and understand why blue light by itself and at night is one of the worst things that we're doing for our health right now. And it's coming from your artificial lighting and it's coming from your tech screens. Man. <laughs> Mic drop. <laughs> I just wish I had uh, my mom and dad's ear for this. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Uh, but they, I mean, they watch plenty of TV. They got a lot of blue light going on. But anyway, I won't, I won't lament about that. I'm sure I'm not the only one that wishes they could get their mom and dad on some holistic health information. However, 
what you just pointed out is that the baseline health level is yeah, super low for most people. Yes. You know, even healthy people, what is considered healthy now is like terrible health compared to previous generations. And I, I noticed something that you posted on one of your pages earlier today that showed just like the de-evolution of men via testosterone reduction. Yeah. It's, it's really something. And I think it's harming, very harmful to obviously to society as well. Um, probably part of this whole like blurring of the lines between genders that we're seeing more and more prolifically has to do with the fact that, well, we got, we got away from nature to begin with. And, you know, whenever you're living life through a screen, that is a pretty homogenized experience <laughs> in, in many ways. So I don't know where to go next. I have a lot of possibilities. <laughs> so maybe uh, uh, in terms of what I've okay, so what I found really fascinating was that you had the condition that you had, and the brain fog being a huge component of that, and the low energy levels, and you took it upon yourself to research through all that till you found your way to a solution. And I think because the baseline is so low for people, it's sort of the the analogy would be somebody that's been smoking Marlboro cigarettes for thirty years. They think that what is I feel fine compared to if they came off of that for like even just three months, what fine felt like then. Yeah. You know, I think that that's where a lot of people are at. They don't even know that they're sick and tired. <laughs> they think that that's just what life is. Yeah. And and that's no, no good. So maybe what I would like you to talk about is, you know, overcoming the brain fog, the mindset that you gave yourself to be able to focus, even when focus was difficult. And then, uh, maybe go over some of the most common questions or hangups people have in, in implementing these methods you're describing. And people are going to want to go back and listen to this again and take notes of like, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. But it does, even though there are little shifts in a lot of areas, cumulatively, it's a lot. So, yes. you know, talk about the journey from <laughs> very, very brain foggy research, managing to research to the point where you are now, like, I assume that there were some baby steps involved in terms of the lifestyle changes. For sure. Yeah. Great question. Um, okay. Well, of course, at the end of the day, you have to have love for yourself and for your lo love for your body. Like the mindset of just wanting to be better. Um, I know that probably doesn't always come easy. And also when you're really sick, like I've had a mother too that has had chronic diseases and been chronically in pain for decades. Um, and I can only imagine what that feels like. And you feel very run down and very helpless. The thing that we need to realize in modern allopathic medicine that is currently happening in our system, they're normalizing and diagnosing everything. And so you have a symptom that comes up. You need to remember when we talked earlier about the body is so wonderful. And even with symptoms and things going on, it's still trying to function for you. And you might have a symptom come up regular headaches or for women, like my period's not the same or it's not coming in all the time. These are not normal, you know, eyesight going bad. There's something that I realize now, like so many people wear prescription glasses. And when I was in high school, like I remember, you know, maybe one or two, um, but I never saw a ton of people with prescription eyeglasses. Now, like it's everywhere. It's so normal for people to wear glasses, even kids and teenagers. It is not normal for your eyesight to go bad at any point in time in your life, maybe if you make it to 80, maybe 90, <laughs> um, but it's not normal. So it's not normal to be losing our periods in our 20s. It's not normal to get PCOS. It's not normal to not have libido into our late stages of life. It's not normal for any of these things. Um, these hunter-gatherer tribes that still exist outside, these women are having their periods into their 60s and 70s. They're having babies into their 60s, 70s, and 80s. Um, it's just a picture to be able to show you that we are supposed to be vital every day, all day, until the day we drop dead. And this is, of course, barring like a really crazy accident or injury or something, right? But our normal day-to-day -day life of our species is supposed to be a very strong and vital human body that can really take care of anything that comes into our environment, right? And so I always kind of knew this, but until kind of working with the naturopath and then getting into some of this work, my mindset has always been that I, you know, I want to feel good and I want to be good. Um, I think you're so right that most people nowadays don't even know what it feels like to feel good. And because 
our, our society is making it so normal to say, oh, well, you're just getting old or, oh, you're just a woman. You've got hormones and emotions or, you know, well, your eyesight's bad. Guess what? We have glasses and contacts for that. Here you go. 400 bucks, you know? Um, I will probably say, and this is going to be funny, but probably one of the things that helps me the most is I'm cheap <laughs> and I'm not rich by any means. And so if I can try to find something that is free or easily accessible to me that I can do myself, um, that was one of my biggest drivers, to be honest. Um, and so that helped me see that when I started learning about the light, I'm like, well, shit, the sun is free. <laughs> you know, I can just go out and spend two hours of the sun. It doesn't cost me anything. So like, why not? We see how it goes. And I will say like one thing that changed for me that was a big sign because um, I was doing bad light life for probably like two decades. I didn't even realize everything I was doing. I thought I was healthy. I never used to eat breakfast. I never used to wake up and be hungry. Um, some people might not think that's a big deal. And I didn't ever used to think so. I was like, well, everybody's different. But I meet a lot of people. I'm starving when I get up. I got to eat. I was never hungry, but I also never saw the sunrise. And so when I first started seeing the sunrise and I told myself, well, I'm going to give it, you know, 60, 90 days within two weeks of just getting up and seeing the sunrise, I was starting to get like, yeah, I could, I could kind of eat. And in 30 days, my stomach was growling by the time I was finishing my walk with the dogs in the morning. So already it was such a huge, that seems like something so minute and small. But when I thought about my whole life of 35 years of age, I was never hungry in the morning. And I had spent two decades doing all kinds of stuff that was bad light life for me. But in 30 days, my body goes, ooh, I want to heal. I'm ready to eat in the morning because I've been seeing the sunrise every day. So that was already a glimmer of like, okay, there's something to this. Like, I got to keep going. Quick interjection. <laughs> yeah. In my Qigong practice, there is a understanding of optimal or peak organ function at different hours of the day. Yeah. And it's like actually a clock. <laughs> and we, we covered this a few episodes back with Qigong master, John Monroe, who I learned from. And the peak function for the stomach is actually between uh, 7 a.m. and 9 a.m. Yes. And you then should. right before that would be peak function for uh, the large intestine. So from like 5 to 7 a.m. Right. And I also TMI, but I used to have constipation issues as a child and young adult. But again, I wasn't waking up and seeing the sunrise to get everything going. And your large intestine would be what was going to help you defecate whatever you had the previous evening and that your body has now worked up to try to get rid of, which are toxins, right? And things that your body doesn't need anymore. It's already absorbed the nutrients, done what it needs to do. Um, and so, yeah, now two and a half years in, like I wake up, I am starving. I'm ready to eat. I do my walk. I do my grounding. I come in, I fix a nice protein and fat breakfast. And by eight 30, nine o'clock in the morning, like I'm going to the bathroom. Um, that's never been the case in my whole life. And so again, it is, it's all worked off of clocks and, um, yeah, but so back to the mindset, um, some of it came from just, you know, being poor and wanting to find easily accessible things. And I had already tried so much stuff, you know, so many different diets, so many supplements, spending so much money on supplements and, you know, supplements and vitamins can definitely help in certain scenarios, especially if you're sick, just to give the body a little bit of boost. But similarly, just to allopathic pharmaceuticals, you're, we are not supposed to be on these things for the rest of our lives. They were created to initially help a condition, help a symptom, help give your body a little bit of a boost. And then you're supposed to get off of them. We're not supposed to have these lifelong prescriptions to these drugs. And it's, it's not a prescription. It's a subscription. Yes. You know, that's the whole the medical industry vitamins. is the subscription model eternally. Yes. And it's the same with vitamins and supplements. And I know that will sound screwy for people that follow health. It, it did for a little while with me, but it makes so much sense. Like, if your body can't make those things naturally, or you don't always need them all the time, too much of a good thing can also become a vice and a bad thing and toxic to the body. And so we have to remember, there's always that yin and yang, that light and dark to everything. And you have to try to keep that in balance. And so the best way is obviously with tying to nature and light and having that circadian rhythms of light during the day and dark at night. Um, so that was kind of my mindset. And then as it just started getting better and better and better, I mean, there was no other reason to not keep following protocols and not keep chasing the light because I was only seeing advancements the more and more that I went. Again, it will still take some time if you're coming from a diagnosis. Jack Cruz kind of always mentioned if you have a specific illness or diagnosis, like I had Lyme disease or maybe somebody with cancer, somebody with um, an autoimmune condition, 
He says it'll usually take about three years to get like optimal from the condition, like fixing the condition, getting rid of symptoms, and then getting your body like optimally strong to be able to handle anything from there on out. So I'm two and a half years in. The only thing that is still kind of um, getting in check and balance with me is like my thyroid and adrenals, but that's the last kind of stage and the quantum pillar of how it works. It's still running very well now. I run very hot and not cold anymore, so it's coming. But I've only had advancements every single time, 30, 60, 90 days, six months, a year with blood work and how I feel. And and now, of course, I have energy radiating from me. Like I'm one of those high on life people that I always thought was like full of shit, <laughs> you know? Two things um, about what you just said. The thyroid issues are likely to self-correct just because of you getting into speaking more and more about what is actually true <laughs> and how you actually feel. Thyroid is super connected to throat chakra there could be some like old unbalanced energy that could be sorted out with sound and i yeah. bring up sound right now just because i know i'm plugging myself but i have to also plug myself <laughs> in the tuning stuff i do for people there's actually the possibility to do an adrenal reset using the tuning fork method so okay. that could be something you're That's interested awesome. in or somebody out there yeah, I would be interested in that. And actually talking about plugging, if people, I'm sure they're going to love this talk, but before the first hour passes, um, that's free for people. I do run Zoom webinars and local seminars. So we do get into like a full presentation with photos and specific protocols. There's Q&A at the end. So you can actually ask questions. Um, you know, this is kind of just like a tease to get that initial foundation information in. And then you can come and do the, the deeper digger dive with me um and, and go through that but yes you're so right on on all of that and i will say with a caveat changing everything in your light life it is going to change you and make you better physically and mentally i do believe the spiritual part will also come in if you don't already have that through um military or religion or some other type of practice um but if you haven't also dealt with emotional things that are in your body that's going to come and you're still going to have to do that. So the light life will do so much for you. But if you're also blocking that part, like your throat chakra, your heart chakra, these different energy sources that are in our body, um, our emotions get stored in our physical body. We have a soul that has emotions and it does get stored in our physical body. Now I will say with getting your light life better, you become this very strong, sovereign, free being that feels like you can take anything on. So even when those days come where maybe you have a little bit of anxiety come in or maybe something happens, an injury or a trauma or something, you are going to be able to cope and handle it so much better than when you are when you're sick and deficient and your body's too tired to be able to do any of that. So that's kind of a caveat from where we started with that question, but I think that's just as equally important to include on the esoteric level than just the physical meat sack um, part that we have of our body. Um, and then as far as questions and issues that people have, I do get this question a lot as far as people asking, um, they're kind of combined where like, if you do have a cloudy or rainy day, cause there's going to be people in England or Washington state or during the winter, um, or like we have rain right now in Louisiana. So it's a cloudy day. You know, is it still appropriate to go out? Are you still getting benefits by going outside? Yes, yes, yes. The nice thing about light is it expands. So even if you have a cloudy day, a rainy day, a winter day, um, you still want to go out and try to get as much light as possible. You're actually getting a ton of infrared and red light through the clouds. So not as much as the blue light. And so again, that's that healing light. So it's very good to get that on your skin and in your eyes as well. So don't ever not think that you can't go outside and get benefits. I know people are so afraid to go outside in the rain, but I mean, in terms of the elements in the classical philosophical sense, water is the healing oh my gosh, element. Yeah. And there's a ton of very esoteric linguistic connections between the sun and water, actually. But that's like a whole nother rabbit hole. I'm not prepared oh. to go down, <laughs> but it, there's a lot of it. That would be a whole nother quantum segment. Actually, the three pillars of quantum health are light, water and magnetism. Um, we talk about light because it is the most important and it's still foundational in the water and magnetism part because light is involved there. So this is kind of the initial idea is to get all the light information out. And then when I do my presentations, I would like to eventually have three different segments of light. We would talk about water and then we would talk about magnetism, but the light really is the most important foundation. Um, the other question that I get a lot is about with sunrise and sunset. Is it still beneficial if you don't have a horizon shot of the actual sun, like seeing the actual sun come up from the horizon? 
So that is not important. It is optimal. Like if you have on the weekend, you can run to the beach or run to a mountain or when you vacation, definitely go see the horizon because it's beautiful and it is optimal. But again, light expands. So as that sun is coming up on the horizon, the whole sky is still going to fill with that red and infrared light in the morning. So like for me, I live on a farm to where I have tree lines in the back. And right now the sun is coming up in my backyard. So I don't have a horizon shot either but I still get that light that comes up at sunrise and goes down at sunset. And so you still want to get that. What's nice is about an hour and a half after sunrise, I'll get kind of some rays of the sun that will come through the trees into my backyard. And if I'm home and I have time, then I will go squat and sit out, you know, barefoot in that spot and do my meditations or do some body movement um, and still get some of that sun on my body. I always definitely make sure too to expose my, my gut to the sun. It's something that, I think um, is important to tie to this whole conversation as well. Um, most people, if you've been following anything with health, most people have gut issues. Um, and also we know that the gut is kind of considered the second brain. So there's a gut brain access that's connected through the vagus nerve. Um, and they say that the gut is the second brain. But in my research I've done, for every one message that the brain sends the gut, the gut sends nine back to the brain. So I actually kind of think that the gut has a little bit more of a boss man <laughs> character than, um, than the brain so much. So everything super important is made in your gut. So your T cells for your immune system are made in your gut. Your sexual reproductive hormones for functioning and vitality and for sex are made in your gut. Are happy hormones like your serotonin and your dopamine that make you feel good, make you happy, make you want to do stuff in life and be motivated. Those are also made in your gut. On top of that, we've already been learning a lot about the microbiome and having like certain types of healthy bacteria, trillions of them in our gut. Well, guess what? All of that is respond. It responds to what your environment is and it responds to your light environment. How many times is your gut out in the sun? Probably hardly ever. And so we want to expose that gut to that morning and afternoon and the UVB light. If you have to go sit on a chair outside of your work office and raise up your shirt a little bit, you got to do it. Um, it is going to help build that good, healthy gut bacteria and barrier. Um, it's going to help grow all of those other hormones that you need to function. And that's where it all starts, actually. Once your gut gets out of balance, then everything else kind of comes colliding down, which is like your sexual hormones, your libido, the adrenals, your thyroid. And it's just a big, vicious cascade. So like if you already are having hormone issues or thyroid issues, you have gut issues. If you have dopamine and serotonin issues, you have gut issues. If you have constipation, IBS, fatigue, you have gut issues. That's where it starts. So even though doctors will want to put you on a pill for thyroid, they'll want to put you on a pill for autoimmune diseases, they're going to put you on a pill for um, your fertility and for your hormones, which are replacement hormones, which are not healthy. You have to go back and heal the gut first. None of those pills are ever, they're just going to be a Band-Aid uh, because you haven't fixed the root cause, which the root is at the gut. And again, that all ties back to circadian rhythms and that all ties back to the sunrise. Um, so I wanted to kind of throw that information in too for people to get. But those are my most common questions. Um, most people don't have problems implementing these. It just comes down to how modern do you want your lifestyle to be? um and how inconvenient you know for me it's not very inconvenient to wear red or blue blocking glasses at night if i want to watch a tv show um it's not very inconvenient for me to wear wired headphones to talk on the phone instead of having it next to my brain or using um airpods so for me it's not a big deal i know that it's protecting my health and it's not that inconvenient it's cheaper as well like i said i'm cheap <laughs> so that helps with making some of these decisions um, and I'm already kind of an outdoorsy person. I had been, and now I'm even more so. That's probably going to be the hardest thing for most people that have just adjusted to a very indoor life. Um, they're not used to being exposed to extreme hots and colds. You know, here in Louisiana in the summer, we'll have 110, 120 degree heat indexes with the humidity. I handle it just fine now these last two summers. And then even in the winter, not that our winter's too intense, but, um, you know, January and February, we'll get a couple of freezing days. And my body handles it just well. And our bodies are supposed to be exposed to hot and cold. That's what our ancestors would have gone through. And that's what keeps your mitochondria strong as well as keeping the circadian rhythms in check. Ooh, so, much. so much more I want to talk to you about your wealth of information. We're going to move over to the second hour now. So okay. everybody listening, 
check out the links in the description for the Rockfin, or if you're hearing not on the live stream, but the replay, this is also available on my Patreon. Posting the link to Rockfin right here. There are a few things I want to say in closing for the free hour, and then I have to make a few announcements for everybody, but uh, everything you just described is so radical by modern standards, but sensible and logical and not even slightly strange by natural standards. <laughs> uh, I remember when I first heard you the very next day I made sure and I saw the sunrise and I have not been as good. I haven't been very good about it since then. And one of the main reasons I wanted to talk to you was because I knew that if we had a conversation, it's going to help light a fire <laughs> under me to go see the big fire more often. Yeah. I do have a pretty good light life relative to the average. But again, like we said, the baseline <laughs> of what is healthy is quite a bit lowered in terms of the bar. So Absolutely. there's a big improvements I can make and I intend to, and I'm really excited about it. You know, in closing, what is interesting about getting your energy right in whatever capacities it needs to be balanced is that it also helps you deal with extremes and what modern society is so dedicated to other than like hiding and shielding us from death <laughs> and keeping any, keeping us from letting go of anything that's actually leading us to our death is that this extreme polarization actually makes the other side of the pole hard to deal with. And so for most people, they're polarized towards comfort, but whenever you find yourself more in balance, like I know you do cold therapy, you just took a very cold shower before we got on here, huge energy booster. Yes. The thing is like what I noticed is whenever I started getting into actual movement practices and energy work through Qigong was that eventually extreme polarity stopped being as hard for me to handle. And like the way I describe it is that, you know, I stopped getting sunburns even without a hugely good light life, even if I wasn't very tanned. Right. Uh, and I stopped being bothered by being hot or cold. I feel, I can feel the coolness in heat and I can feel the heat in cold. Yeah. And that might sound paradoxical, but just like if you touch something that is really cold, it feels like it burned you. You know what yeah. I mean? Yeah. The same can be true about what is hot. And it's just sort of like a perspective shift is you want to know that uh, there is really no opposites. There's just matters of degree. So whatever it is that you're feeling, what you think is its opposite is actually a part of what it is that you're feeling. <laughs> it's on the same spectrum. It's the same thing. It's a hermetic axiom. Yeah. So I bring this up because like this allows me to go on barefoot walks in the snow and stay, stay grounded in the winter. And everything that you've been talking about are things that I've been doing my best to implement. But like, even before I heard about you, but hearing you describe it in detail and the huge results you got have just been overwhelmingly cool. So everybody, please come over and join us on the Rockfin side, posting the link in the chat again. We're going to have a lot of fun. I intend to, I mean, we may get into more of the nitty gritty details that she hasn't laid out yet, but she's also doing a great job presenting this on other podcasts like the Higher Side Chats or Cosmic Keys. And so in the second hour, there's probably going to be a prior prioritization on more spiritual, maybe more <laughs> woo type conversations, but we'll, you know, we'll see where we go. I definitely want to hear about your work with horses. And um, yeah, I've got a huge list of notes from the first hour. I'm really excited. Um, announcements though, to make before we go is there are affiliate links. People can support interverse through at the bottom. And I know we just kind of like <laughs> trash supplements a little bit, but in terms of using them for, uh, something that you have a specific need for, they're still good for that. You know, like I started on a chlorophyll, I started noticing that my body odor was taking on a strange, <laughs> a strange turn. <laughs> yeah. And I was like, okay, I need to do some internal cleansing. Chlorophyll is like an internal deodorant. Chlorophyll is also what plants use to metabolize sun. So I'm sure it's good for me in that regard. Uh, so the Clive de Carl link is what people might want to check out for things like magnesium, which you brought up using. Uh, I thought it was fascinating too. When you brought up vitamin D, I realized that D is an old name for the sun <laughs> D or the God D D O D S, you know, yeah. uh, do it. Deus was, they literally said Deus when they were talking about Zeus anyway. Yeah. So like vitamin D it's ironic that that's the one that comes from the sun. I don't think that's by accident. So check out Clive DeCarl. There's all the good supplements you might want, including something I haven't tried, but he's actually got a red light therapy laser wristband that shoots laser beam red light into your 
like where your pulse is at, you know, so that actually sort of detoxes all the blood or gives all the blood exposure to it over a few minutes of time as your body circulates all your blood. People might like that. Also very excited about the Music and Sky Festival Alpha Vedic podcast is putting on some people that I'm going to put you in touch with. They have a really great show. I like and, Alpha uh, Vedic. I love them. Oh, cool. Yeah. Uh, Mike Winner, DJ Mike, he's putting on this amazing festival, Music and Sky, in California. I'm going to be there. It is the weekend around October 15th. If people want to get $50 off their ticket, put in Chance 50, I believe, or just check the description and make sure that you, I got that right. There'll be a link to that. There's many other ways you can support the show. I'd love to get you guys some tuning out there listening. Hit me up for scheduling tuning sooner the better because the, you know, the client list is a few weeks out in terms of booking. And uh, I think that's everything. Jackie, can you give them your websites and your Instagram and how they can connect with you and what you'd like them to see before we head over to the uh, second hour? Yeah. So my website is lightshapes.life. You'll be able to just get some basic information on me and what all of this means. And then any of my upcoming events, you'll be able to sign up for any webinars or see where I'm having local seminars, as well as if you need to contact me to ask questions, or if you are keen on having me come and speak to your facility, I'll talk anywhere, schools, yoga studios, doctor's offices. I don't care. I want to share the information as much as possible. I do post online as well on my Instagram page, almost daily, just some free information and updated articles and science that's coming out on quantum health. Um, and that is Jolie, J-O-L-I-E underscore E-N underscore soul, S-O-L. So it's Jolie underscore in underscore soul. And you can find me there. Thank you so much for talking to me. I'm really excited to uh, get to the other hour and I'm going to play a musical interlude. And when that's over, we're cutting off the YouTube stream and the other non rock fan streams. This song is by Volo. Volo is my new friend who I met via email who listens to the show and makes amazing music. And this song is called Sun Drops. Even though I played Volo last episode, I'm so into it right now and he's got a ton of stuff. So I'm like, I'll just do it again. So shout out to Oliver, aka Volo. Thank you for sharing your music with me, dude. And everybody out there, I hope to see you join us on the Rockfin or the Patreon later. Get into our Telegram chat if you want to keep the conversation going with your fellow Interversians. And we'll see you guys on the other side. Thank you.